my name is, actually I've met all of you, but all, some of you only met one, so I'll remind you. My name is Reverend Karen Frost, and this is Spirit Uncensored. So, Spirit Uncensored, the, the name Spirit Uncensored came up from when I was at the Center for Spiritual Living Next Gen Retreat. This is a retreat for people who are aged um, like 19, so basically the way that, that things were sectioned is there's a, a teen camp that kids go to up until 18, and then they age out at 18. So Next Gen is designed for that in-between space of the 19 to 40 range. And there was all kinds of curse words throughout the whole thing. And I was like, this is what church is supposed to be like. How come I've never been anywhere like that? And I've already been in the process of formulating this experience. Uh, Reverend David Allen Cruz, who is running our camera, had stepped up and said, let's, well, actually I said, went to him and said, let's do something together. We decided we would figure it out at some point. And when Donia found out, Donia, who was on keys, was found out that David and I were doing something, she said, let me come on board. And this is actually Donia's last Sunday event at being our music director. She's stepping down. And we love her and are very, very grateful for uh, not when she's not leaving all together. Uh, we, we have a, a board meeting. We're now called the Spiritual Rock Stars because Right, like board just feels like a board. You have to go to a board meeting versus a spiritual rock star meeting. Like, which one would you rather go to? So, yes, and it's like, oh, my spiritual rock stars versus my board. I just felt like I'd rather call them that. And so we all agreed to that term last week. And so Donia is still a spiritual rock star. She's not giving that seat up. Um, but we we won't. We decided just not to have a music director since we've been having so many guest artists and it's a monthly event. So Spirit Uncensored, we clearly established ourselves as a group that the, the space is designed to be your spiritual playground. That every one of every spiritual background is welcome. That regardless of what you believe, this is a space to really dig into those beliefs, to explore those beliefs, identify what beliefs work best for you. What we say is that love is our religion, and what that means for us is that that energy, that physical energy that everyone knows, physics have proven that energy is everywhere. There is no place where energy is not present, and so we call that God. And knowing that that energy is a loving energy that conspires for our good at all times, if we just know it and choose to recognize that that's exactly what it's for, and so I am so grateful that we are kicking off this month with Reverend Cliff Rubin, who is the senior minister at SpiritWorks here, who's been so kind to help us use the space. <laughs> Reverend Cliff Rubin is our musical artist this month. So give it up for Reverend Cliff.
sing that song specifically because today is a divine guidance kind of day. Uh, for the last three months, the next month will be the last one, we've been diving into the four agreements, a book by Don Miguel Ruiz. The first month was to have to be impeccable with your word, and, and in that month we did a identifying a quality that we'd like to release from 2018 and choosing the quality and be supported with being impeccable for our word in 2018. In, tw in February last month was don't take anything personally. And this month is don't make assumptions. And so part of not making assumptions is that we as a team decided that we're not going to make an assumption about what you need for a spiritual experience. And so each of you have these clipboards here. There's a survey on top. At some point, please fill that out, um, and we'll collect those from you also. Um, but there's a blank piece of paper underneath it. And that blank piece of paper is your blank slate of whatever it is that you are, are open to receive today. And actually, it might actually help that we're a little light, because we might be able to get to each and every person's request or suggestion. And so that suggestion could be anything, because the universe itself is unlimited. You might want Reverend Cliff, Donia, and I to do a coordinated tap dance, and we are going to trust that spirit will allow for that to manifest in some kind of way. But I imagine that you're here for some kind of reason, like, I don't know, it could be anything, like something that's going on in your life. So maybe you want a song, a specific song, or a general song of, I, I really could use some, some, some inspiration around prosperity, or use some inspiration about relationships. Like, it could be vague like that, and you don't have to put your name on it either. So it's, if you want to put your name on it, feel free, both for the survey and for this, feel free. But if not, don't. I'm not doing anything with knowing that your name is on it anyway. Um, so, I'll have Donia just play a little on the keys and allow whatever it is to emerge, to emerge and use your piece of paper and we'll collect them and we will allow Spirit to guide us through this experience.
It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what's happening in your bank account. Sometimes for me, when I, when I have a cold, that that's the moment that I choose the most because I can't I can't do anything else. I can't do other stuff. I just kind of got to sit here and be sick. And so I can be irritated about the fact that I'm sick because it does not feel good at all. Or I can do everything that I can to choose joy in every moment. And what that looks like for me when I'm sick is the context of focus on the breath of what little piece of breath that I'm able to get through my nose and just having gratitude for the small amount of breath that's working. Sometimes it's watching a TV show or taking all of the naps and being knowing that the, the reason I'm sick right now is because my body was like, look, bitch, you need, to, you need a nap. And I wasn't listening, so that's why it got to that point that it shut me down. So I say all this to say that at any time, we can choose happiness. There is no, in regards to being fulfilled, it starts with the now moment. It starts with the present. At any now moment, we can choose to be fulfilled now, to be happy now. And then anything that comes up that contradicts that, we get to notice and have a divine relationship with that joy, with our conscious understanding of how we are being fulfilled. Looks like Tony has got an idea for us. Absolutely does happen, but it's 
Reverend Cliff talked about this morning, this concept of patience, of, of when you have a clear intention and are clear having, allowing divine guidance to emerge to bring you through each step, but at the same time know it's gonna show up eventually. That you can sit around and be mad about it, or you can know, I pay for the space, pretty much. I don't take a salary at all, because this is my gift, this is my love. Um, and it's also a knowing that when you contribute to the vibration of something that you feel like is doing good work in the universe, that the universe says yes to you for that. It's this idea that this is I, um, Edwin Gaines introduced the whole concept of tithing to me and talked about how in the Bible that when and it's weird for me to be talking about the Bible, but it, you know the whole thing was that um, in the Bible it says when you give it, you are it is returned tenfold, and the idea is that regardless of what you believe, what spiritual text you believe in. What you believe creates your experience. And so when you choose to participate in the world financially, when you say, I am giving to this thing, you are participating in that flow. But when you know that what you give not only allows for greater gifts of whatever it is that you're donating to, to, to have, but on top of that, you participating in that flow allows for greater gifts of abundance to come into your life is choosing to consciously participate in this experience. Does somebody have like a financial affirmation that they like to use? Do you? Okay. Do you have one you like to use? I actually have uh, some beautiful affirma financial affirmations, yes. Fantastic, will you share them with us, Diane? Um, it's actually from a book called The Abundance Book, and it's Statements of Principles. God, I am, is lavish, unfailing abundance, the rich, omnipresent substance of the universe. This all-providing source of infinite prosperity is individualized as me, as the reality of me. I lift up my mind and heart to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. I am conscious of the inner presence as my lavish abundance. I am conscious of the constant activity of this mind of infinite prosperity. Therefore, my consciousness is filled with the light of truth. Great. So I invite you all to take your contribution, hold it to your heart, and don't you pick one of those affirmations for us to repeat with you. Sure. Let's do God is lavish, unfailing abundance. God is lavish, unfailing abundance. The rich, I'm sorry, hold on. <laughs> I lift up my heart and mind to be aware and understand and to know that I am the source and substance of all my good. I let's let's break that up a little bit. <laughs> I lift up my mind. I lift up my mind and heart and heart to be aware to be aware to understand to understand and to know and to know that the divine presence that the divine presence I am I am is the source and substance is the source and substance of all my good of all of my good and so it is. Amen. Do you have a financial song for us? Some prosperity music for us?
take a deep breath between me. And knowing that right here, what is here in front of me, and what's been sent through Venmo, like I just did, and what is on its way, what's already been, and what hasn't even shown up yet, it's just nothing but love and action. It is love and currency, it is love and energy, it is here to do good, it is here to empower, to enlighten, to nourish, to flourish, to elevate spirit uncensored and what it does in this world. And I'm so grateful in this moment to be in this position to get to send it with big loves and kisses and all kinds of yumminess out into the ethers and into God as God, as myself as God. And I'm so grateful. And I'm so grateful, and I'm so grateful for the energy that I feel right now of the goodness that is already coming from all of this love energy. And so with that, I release it, I let it go, and it is the bomb, and it goes and does wonderful, beautiful things, as together we say, and so it is. Amen. That's a word that works better for you. All right, I lost my pieces of paper, unless I just dumped those out. We'll see. But thank you for that person who... Who put all that stuff on there that we got to have an opportunity to talk about spiritual abundance and know the truth. Is that yours? Yeah, go ahead, fly it at me. Um, the next is a semi-detailed story about myself. Um, does that person want to tell that semi-detailed story about themselves? The person who wrote this on the piece of paper? Okay, I'm creating it. A semi-detailed story about yourself? And I'm sure there will be a story for me to tell on that one. It'll be on this piece of paper. What do I do with the rest of them? Are they lost? Are they under that red, that white hat? Ooh, this is fun. All right. Power. No wait. Loud power. Everything released. Loud power. Everything released. So I said before about these these now moments and this breath, these amazing things, that no matter what has happened, no, no matter what money you just gave, no matter what it happened before now, is it is released. It is done. It's already happened. Like, there is no going back and changing what has already happened. And so when we make a conscious commitment to be present, to be grateful for the present moment, to be loud and be powerful, Okay, this is a story. Great. Loud and powerful. So, I was talking about this whole idea of how I wanted to use television as a medium to inspire. And I took this diversity class through the Centers for Spiritual Living. It was, it was over the course of two weekends. One was in January, and the last one was in March. And the March piece of it was online. And I've never taken an online class that was literally all day. It was first from like a Friday night from 6 to 9 p.m. and then the next day from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that was rough to have to be looking at a computer screen and talking to these people from this context was challenging for me. And I know the reason it ended up being challenging for me was that the, the people in this class, let's just say the people in this class, this was their, their first experience of having a conversation about diversity and inclusion. They were, they had gotten to the point where they were practitioners and they were in their ministerial program and they had never really dove into what racial identity could really look like. And in all honesty, I hadn't either. Really outside of my own work, I hadn't really done any sort of deep dive into my beliefs about my identity. And I say all the time, each and every one of you has heard me say, well maybe not, most of you have heard me say, that I'm a half black, half Jewish lesbian. I see this all the time. So in my head, I am very conscious and aware of my relationship to my identity. But that sentence of being, of the fact, me saying that I'm a half black, half Jewish lesbian, I didn't start saying that out loud until two years ago when I became a minister. And I don't know what it was that sparked it. I said it once and everyone laughed. And I was like, why is that funny? Like, this is just who I am. I'm intended to be a joke. 
and then I kept, I, every time I said it, people would laugh. And then it ended up being something that I, somebody had something they had to say. They wanted to tell me about it after service. It would be, I don't know, everybody had their own reasons. So one of those pieces of identity, or maybe the whole combination of it, people wanted to have a conversation with me about it. So I was like, oh, this is a good thing for me to be saying, so I'm just going to keep saying it. And it kept working for me. I said it in my interview at Juvie Productions, and my boss still references that moment. Um, it's, it's saying that out loud has worked for me, but I haven't really dove into what those, what that identity means on each individual basis, what it means to be black, what it means to be Jewish, what it means to be black and Jewish, what it means to be a lesbian, what it means to be a lesbian in combination of all those things. And then there's a whole other thing with identity with being a lesbian, because there's a, a masculine feminine thing going on with that, um, that most women don't really dive into their relationship with their gender in the way that lesbians do. And so it, it just was a whole deep dive into my identity that was uncomfortable with a whole lot of people who've never dove into their identity either. And not having the hallways and the, the breaks to really kind of have these individual conversations with people made, it, made that class even more challenging. And I behaved in that class in a way that was not very ministerial. And the day after, I realized that. I was like, huh, what was that? I didn't, well, I didn't notice in the moment that I wasn't being very ministerial. But the next day, I was like, oh, goodness. I did not show up for a ministerial class. This was a ministerial class. I was the only minister in the room. Every one of them was a practitioner. And I was not the best version of myself. And so I, I sent some apology emails and Facebook messages. Everybody accepted it because they're all practitioners, so they have to. And I, I learned some things about myself. So last night I was writing, I had to write this paper about, for, there were these questions about diversity. And the questions themselves are laughable to ask me. There were questions like, how does diversity show up in your life? Like, how? What do you mean, my life? Like I can I can write an entire book about how it shows up in my own body. I don't I don't know how to do this. And so to write a six to nine page paper and and what I'm going to do as a minister and I was one of like I said the only person that was actually a minister. What I'm going to do for diversity and inclusion. But what it brought up for me were things like um, I realized that I've never had a person of color for than me perform on this stage like as a solo performer. I've never had that. So I'm like, oh, that's something that I can consciously choose. The other thing I noticed is that my wife and I and my cousin Ashley do all of our marketing. And there are things that come up like, um, Ronnie wrote this great blog. You should absolutely check out our website and read this blog. Ronnie probably doesn't want you to read it, but it's amazing. Um, and the word stank was used. And so we were questioning, we were questioning something completely different as to whether this this thing might be offensive, and when you read it, you'll know what I'm talking about. So I, I said, I texted a friend, and I was like, would you be my token white person to tell me if this blog is offensive? And she was very excited to be my token white person. No one's ever asked her that before. She was honored. And she said, no, it's not offensive, but I don't know what stank means. And so we put the definition of stank inside of the thing. So realizing that my entire team of marketing is all black women. I clearly need some diversity of, of voices in what it is that we're saying. And so I'm just, I, this person, Kristen, who I sent it to, Kristen is my ministerial intern. I can use her for this process. So I'm just gonna have her be the person that I go to to be an extra set of eyes for marketing. So I learn things about what I can do differently for diversity and inclusion from having taken this class. I learned that all of the things that I thought I had healed, I had not, and now I know, and I'm playing in that. Um, and I am grateful for the power that comes out of it. So, oh, this was a really long story to get to the point about power, because that wasn't really what I was going to say about power. What I was going to say was that the decision to use my voice was about recognizing that my intersectionality of identities made it so that I really, I got inside of communities that a lot of people don't get to see. I get to, people ask me, white people ask me questions, feel comfortable asking me questions that they aren't comfortable asking because I have created a safe space. 
um, black people tell me they're offended by things I do um, because I have created that safe space and I'm very offensive to black people. So I just, I play in that. If I know you're looking at me, like I can't even get into it. I was literally just told yesterday something offensive that I did to black people. Like, and really for me, there's a whole other story associated as to why that happens um, and what I'm learning about that as well. But having to, having spirit put me in the context of being a minister at this time and needing to take this diversity class, I'm now recognizing that all of these things are coming forth for me to use my voice as I am doing now. I have been uncomfortable with the conversation about diversity lately, especially because it's so loud in the news. I felt like if I was one of those people that I was just making it worse. It was at the time that I spoke at the Global Truth Center about diversity and my wife told me that she heard this guy in the, in the congregation go here. She goes again and I had this fear of not wanting to be that person of here she goes again. But I realized that I was going through all of this. It doesn't matter that that guy felt that way. It's okay. He gets to feel that way. That's his life. But I am here. I am here to use my voice. And there's no reason for me to be afraid of the consequences of it. I am surrendering to knowing that everything that needs to be known is known and that any decision that I make every time I offend a black person, that it gives me another opportunity for me to learn something new. So I'm grateful for the, for the lessons and I'm grateful for the, somebody having, Jane, for you having thrown that paper or thing at me. That's divine guidance. That is divine guidance. You got a song. There was a time in my all I had to do it all by myself. That is a shame. It's a shame, right? It's so sad. I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient. I didn't know the love of God was a hand. Now I can say, what are you if, say? if you are discouraged, struggling just to God is not 
we believe that God is not this man in the sky that you pray to, this kind of magical figure, but that God is the universe itself. And when you think of things like, as I say, that all of life is in relationship, if you think of something like a plant, the whole concept of a plant is that it, there is a perfect ecology that allows for plants to thrive and survive and keep thriving and surviving. And that human beings survive because of the existence of these plants. There is this harmonious relationship. There's a food chain. If you look at any piece, anything in nature, you can see how we are all related and connected. And that's part of what Spirit Uncensored is about, is recognizing there's no space, no word, no time, no place where God is not present. So this next one is about letting go of self-doubt and letting spirit fill me to overflowing. I hope whatever it is that you release and let go and allow spirit to run your life, that letting go of self-doubt. Self-doubt. Self-doubt's fun, isn't it? Because, I mean, all it is is this idea that we're not enough. That whatever it is that we are trying to achieve, whatever it is that we're trying to experience, we don't have what we need to be that. That there is some quality, some experience, something that's necessary, that we are not already all that we need. And the concept of knowing that we are all that we need is a practice. It's a conscious decision. One has to make a conscious decision to know that I am everything that I need that no extra step needs to be taken. If I want to take a diversity and inclusion class, because people keep asking me to teach it, that yes, I'm gonna take, actually, I'll even, I'll even tell you that real quick. Um, I was at a retreat in December, and my favorite people from that retreat, same thing, that next gen retreat I went to this summer, they had a winter one, and John was there. And at that retreat, two people who I love, who were practitioners, said, you should take this, they didn't say you should. They said, we're taking this, this diversity and inclusion class. And I was like, oh, I should really take that. And they said, well, if you're going to, this person is the best person to take it with. And even though there was a weekend in San Diego, one of them just happened to have a house with three bedrooms. They were house sitting for someone. And so there were just bedrooms free for us to have a ministerial sleepover. So the whole idea of having a sleepover with people I love is what got me there. That's what made me sign up for this class. But that whole, I was experiencing self-doubt around my voice, using my voice for diversity, because I do affect black people all the time, and because I've never taken a black history class, really any kind of history class outside of what's mandated um, as a student in Illinois. Illinois' history program was not very good, so I don't know a lot about how things came to be. And when it comes to diversity and inclusion, like I didn't think of myself as really having the tools or the experience to really speak up for diversity and inclusion. But then when I took this class, I realized I did. And it's, it wasn't that I needed the class to tell me that, it's just that my self-doubt was keeping me from where I needed to be. And divine guidance sort of pushed me in that edge by saying, hey, wouldn't a sleepover with your friends in San Diego be really fun? It had to be wrapped up in that package, especially because that class was $600. And I had to shove out $600 to, to use my time that's already limited. It, it, was a, it was a decision, but that ministerial sleepover, that's what got me there. So we, we all have, I shouldn't say we all, I'm not gonna speak for all of us, but that, Anytime that we feel like we were not enough, anytime that we notice ourselves having that thought, we get to use our breath as that tool and have a brand new thought. We get to remember, I am enough. Whatever it is that's creeping into my subconscious that's making me feel like I should be doubting myself is super wrong. And that's okay. There gets to be wrong thoughts in my head. Story. That's part of being a human being, is having wrong things, things that don't work for me, coming to us. Since I've been, since I've started Spirit Uncensored, lots of people have lots of opinions about what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. And a lot of those things contradict each other. There have been things that I've done that people say, that thing was my favorite. And other people are like, I hated that, don't ever do that again. 
and I'm in this space of, well, which one is, who's right? And the answer is that no one is right. No one's opinion is better or truer than another's. It's just choosing to live your life the way that you want to and knowing that you made the decision that worked best for you in whatever moment that is brings peace. And so choosing peace, choosing love, self-acceptance, having that habit as often as we have is an incredible habit to build. You got a song for us down here? I, I kind of do. Okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually modify a Whitney Houston song. Oh, okay. Right. I fill me up. I give me love. More love than I've ever seen. Yeah. 
answer has come in, fantastic. If not, no worries. Because each of our lives are unfolding absolutely perfectly. Whatever needs to be known for our next step in our evolution, if we truly seek it, the answer will arise. Maybe now. Maybe five minutes from now. Maybe ten years from now. Whenever that right moment is, it occurs. So let's just take in a deep breath and truly allow peace around this topic, whatever that topic is. Really showing it love, giving it great thanks for being us, for being within us to nudging us and giving great thanks for the design of the universe itself that allows for these divine nudges to unfold. Nudge, never underestimate divine guidance emerging. Feeling grateful for the perfection of the earth itself that allows us to come together to make conscious choices to choose new habits to make decisions that serve us to choose joy as often as we remember and to choose forgiveness every time we forget so I know that whatever wisdom has manifested itself in each of our consciousnesses. It's perfect. It's exactly what we need. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that wisdom. I'm grateful for that divine nudge. That divine guidance. And in this place of gratitude, I let it be so. I invite you all to let it be so. And let's affirm it all together by saying, so it is. And so it is. Amen. All right. So, did that, that, that's all of them. Hooray for that. Does everyone feel whole, perfect, and complete? All right, John does. Because John is a spiritual slut. Let me tell you about that real quick. If you don't know, basically a spiritual slut is somebody who recognizes, who, who has a conscious relationship to spirits. And knowing that conscious relationship, knowing that God is everywhere, that that person uses spirit, plays in the spiritual playground, in all spiritual playgrounds. It's not a, because I'm a member here, I'm not going there. It's being open to play in different spiritual spaces. That's why you're a slut, because you're in different spiritual homes. And this, because we're once a month, the intention is that this is supplemental to what it is that, whatever it is that you're doing. And if you are not part of a spiritual community, there are books. We have a Facebook um, group called Spiritual Sluts that you can join and participate in outside of this. And if you have questions, comments, ideas, feelings, I invite you to write it all down on the survey on the clipboards around you. So I would love to know your thoughts. Um, everything that you eat with this experience, if you've been to other ones, um, we'll be just collecting those at, at the end of this. And I'm grateful. Grateful for this experience. Grateful for everybody's participation and grateful for all of you for showing up, not just for me, not just for this, but for yourselves. And so let's close this out in prayer. Again, settle into your seats. I am so grateful for my decision to show up, to know that God is all we need, that God is all there is. 
that each one of us has the opportunity to change our relationship to self-doubt, to change our relationship to financial prosperity, to change our, to have a whole, loving, gratitude-driven experience to our relationship to spirit. And I'm grateful for each person who has chosen to write down a piece of paper and allow whatever it is that needed to be known to be known to choose their own spiritual adventure and know that after this moment, after this day, we go forth to have a whole nother spiritual adventure. That that's the whole purpose of this. This whole earth is our playground. We are here to explore and play in the definition of God, explore and play in life, to enjoy it and choose joy as often as we remember. So I am so grateful to know that. I'm so grateful for the fact that the universe is designed for this. And I'm so grateful for each one of us who has chosen to participate and play in this way. So I know that our next spiritual adventure is absolutely, absolutely blessed. And I'm grateful for all of the choices made in those spiritual adventures. And in this place of gratitude, I just breathe in love, breathe in peace, breathe in serenity, settling back into this space. And in gratitude, we can affirm by saying together. And, and so, so it is. is. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us.
Light. You want to go first? You want me to go first? Okay. All right. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. So, as I said, that whole now moment situation, that thing is the best. And my favorite tool, this thing that no matter what's going on in life, no matter what experiencing, no matter how sick I am, my breath in my body is always present. It's free. It costs no money. And I get to check in with it and do whatever I want to do with it. I get to take a deep breath like Debbie just did in the front row. I get to have gratitude for it. And something else we get to do, what most of us do, is not pay attention to it at all. We go throughout our entire day just living, thinking about to-do lists, focus on what's in front of us, the have-tos, without taking the moment to really center ourselves. And this breath, because it's always here, we have this choice to use it as a conscious reminder to have gratitude for everything that's happening in our lives. And no matter what's going on, there's always something to be grateful for. If your body is functioning completely properly, that's a great thing. Or even just your hands. Having the ability to have working hands is something that I know. I, don't, I didn't wake up this morning and have gratitude for my hands. And I, I try to have a practice of when I'm driving to work to be grateful for the fact that my car works. Donia did not have an opportunity to experience that, that gratitude earlier. <laughs> but she had other things to be grateful for and focused on those things instead. That choosing to recognize that anytime you have the opportunity to recognize this is a brand new moment, whatever happened before this moment, does not matter. All that matters is this now moment. And my breath is this perfect tool that I have to remind me that I can make a new choice of whatever is going on in my life. I can choose gratitude. I can choose love. I can choose forgiveness. I can choose light anytime I choose. So I invite that person to use that breath as that tool to generate that practice. Substance, love, and joy. To find peace, you must employ these principles of truth. Show off for me.
that we don't have to pay attention to gravity. It's always working for us, preventing us from flying out into the ether. Each one of us has the opportunity to check in, connect with the breath, and really experience the gift of all of the things that we don't notice, all of the things that we take for granted, like breath, like gravity, like mobility, like California sunshine, which we are notice it when it's gone. We get to be grateful for the fact that we don't live in a place with snow. So let's just breathe into the body, experiencing that extension of the breath into the body, knowing that this breath is a symbol for us expanding into our relationship with the earth, with all of life, with the spirit that each one of us is. And I know that this experience is absolutely blessed. That peace, heart expansion, love is being expressed right now in this moment. positive 
Um, and the first full-time job, actually the first job that I had um, was for an unscripted agent. That's how I ended up stocking up scripted for as long as I was. And it took a year and a half to get there, but it was a, a half-day part-time job. And uh, we are, are, the list of talent that we had were all uh, marginalized people. And the agent that I worked for said, my job, what I want to do is create the space and the opportunities for people who don't have an opportunity to be on television, to develop unscripted programming around them. So I was like, okay, that counts as positive. I can get down with that. And the next job was the production company that produces Undercover Boss, which is that show, you're nodding your heads. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's like the only heartwarming reality show on television history. And uh, even though I had to do some, I shouldn't say had to do, I was put in situations I was uncomfortable with, and I spoke up in those moments. I said, I'm not cool with us pitching a TV show that's like this. And I was heard, it was pitched anyway. There was actually one show in particular that all of the networks in LA also said, we don't feel good about this. So I was like, oh good. Hollywood is, is a much nicer place than I had thought. So stuck in unscripted for a long time. And every day, I was like, what do I need to do? This is not working. So I took every single class that my spiritual center had to offer, all the way up to ministerial, completed ministerial, still wasn't working in scripted television. So I'm like, I, like what, what more education can I do about the law of attraction? Obviously, I, I don't know how to do this because it's not working. A year into being a minister, I got my first job in scripted television. And I noticed, really just three days ago, I'm not even going to act like I just made this revelation before. It's, it's been like really, a, literally a total of three months that I have noticed this, that the reason it took me so long to get my first job in scripted television is because I was supposed to be a minister. <laughs> I would have never been a minister if the universe is not fucking with me and keeping my job like in the background waiting for this experience to happen and even like I said the first year like so I was a minister for a year people were calling me to show up and do stuff and I was like why are all these people calling me I'm trying to figure out how to make the law of attraction work over here it's still not working what do these people even want me to say and in retrospect I realized, and I did, I made lots of efforts to surrender. I surrendered for months, sometime, at a time, and it was just like, okay, it's been months. Where is my thing? Why am I not attracting this thing? What belief do I have that's preventing me from attracting this thing? And it really wasn't a belief that was preventing me from it. It was really the universe nudging me towards ministry. And the whole logic behind it was that what I see now is what I said. This is why you have to be clear about your intentions. What I said was that I wanted to use television as a medium to inspire positive change. How can I inspire positive change when I'm not clear about what spirit is and what positive change even looks like? Ministry, going to ministerial school taught me that. It gave me that clarity, that point of view that I would have never had if I had gotten that job. And I would have just been trying to make these things work without having any clear perspective and point of view about spirit itself. So I can see the blessing in that today. And I can look back at that experience and, and know, yes, it would have been hard to have surrendered to God for six years waiting for that to happen. But what I'm saying is, it would have been a much more joyful life if I had. I had plenty of opportunities to kick it at the beach. I did do that. People inspired me to go to the beach and enjoy myself, to hang out with friends, make new friends. I, I could have been enjoying every moment of the day, but I wasn't because I couldn't surrender to the fact that this thing had not happened yet. So if there is anything that this story can do, is whatever it is, if anyone is waiting for something to happen, Stop waiting for it to happen. Trust it's gonna eventually. If it takes 30 years, I'm very sorry. But whatever it is that's happening in those 30 years are the right and perfect thing for you. So just know that. Exhale, surrender, down on my knees, learning to leave behind the feeling to please I get out of my way get 
out of my past, get out of my story, and I'm free at last I surrender. It's that 
that same thing of, I'm ready for something new and something different. Actually, Mitch told this story a couple of months ago. You may or not have been present for it, but my wife said to me, I was feeling overwhelmed, like my to-do list, as I said, in 2019, and I, my wife said to me, what can we do? If we can put money in some area in particular, what would it be that would make your life easier? And I said, an assistant. And she was like, we don't have like money for an assistant. Like that's not what I meant. I meant like if you need a logo, like some money, you know, now she was like, I can't help you with that. And I was like, but you know who can? God can help me with that. I don't need money for an assistant. All I gotta do is pray. And so I have a prayer partner in Chicago. We got on the phone the next morning and I prayed for an assistant on Wednesday. On Thursday, I walked into my office and this woman named Ronnie, was the same name as my wife, which is fun, um, she was our intern in the summer, in, over the, the fall semester. And she said, and I said, oh, are you starting today? And she said, yes, and I'm your assistant. Tell me your scheduling preferences. And I was like, I just prayed for this yesterday. Like, what is this? How did, I, how did no one tell me? I was getting an assistant, and I just walked into the office and find this out. She is the best assistant ever on top of that. So not only did I not need money for an assistant, was it manifested for me, but the best assistant ever, and I don't even have to remember her name because it's the same as my wife's. <laughs> so that surrender is the answer. Surrender is the answer. And that's a good time, I think, for a, for a giving period because the whole process of giving, there are financial envelopes, um, financial contribution envelopes on our clipboards, and that whole concept itself of giving is really a trust. It's both a trust that we're going to do something good with your money, that we're going to hire Jamie Lula and Amy Steinberg to sing with your money. That's what we do with it. Um, and